So we wanted to talk about the nose rhinoplasty and the interrelationship with orthognathic jaw surgery. So the ideal sequence, first of all, is to have jaw surgery first. Um, if there's breathing trouble, if there's uh, nasal aesthetic concerns, um, sometimes that seems like that's the lower hanging fruit and to do that first, but the ideal sequence, if we can, is to always set the foundation first. So that's doing the orthognathic surgery, in particular the Lafort. And there are certain ways that we do it to try to set us up for success for a future rhinoplasty. There's ways that we manage how the septum uh, attaches to the upper jaw. There's ways we can actually open up um, the bony nasal cavity and remove part of the bony septum during jaw surgery. And that in and of itself is going to already start to improve some of the nasal breathing. In some situations, if the nasal aesthetics doesn't change significantly or improves, and because of the jaw surgery, we've opened up the nasal breathing, a future nasal surgery or rhinoplasty is not needed. In the situations where we know that there's a pre-existing nasal deformity and pretty significant obstruction, particularly in the cartilaginous septum and the septum that's in the back that is comprised of the vomer and the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid typically, we usually know and can anticipate that we will likely require rhinoplasty and nasal surgery after jaw surgery. When we do this, um, usually it's a couple months after jaw surgery because we want some of the swelling to come down. We want the healing from the jaw surgery to have already taken place so we can best assess how to reposition the nose. The most common time we do it is probably four to six months after jaw surgery. Um, and this will entail opening up uh, the breathing by way of uh, septum and septal repositioning, squeezing away uh, the turbinates or pushing those out of the way to open up the nasal cavity, doing some manipulations of the cartilage to tighten the cartilage and place grafts that open up the internal and external nasal valves. And then lastly and frequently, patients want their nose to be aesthetically balanced too, uh, to fit with the new position of the jaw. So this may entail changing the tip position, projecting the tip, um, changing the uh, orientation of the tip and the nostrils, uh, smoothing any dorsal humps, uh, balancing the bridge uh, in the rest of the nose. We know and can predict frequently based on the upper jaw movement how the nose is going to change. We've written a lot of 3D studies um, uh, to help us define and better be able to predict this. When we move the upper jaw forward and when we impact it or shorten the distance up front, this frequently widens the alar base. It changes the nostrils from a more oblique or vertical fashion to a more horizontal or flattened fashion. It changes the tip projection so that the part of the lip uh, at the base of the nose to the tip of the nose shortens, even though maybe the overall tip projection increases the tip tends to turn up slightly, uh, and again, the base looks wide compared to the, the dorsum. Sometimes the dorsal hump might look a little bit less, um, and in your specific case, we can try to utilize this knowledge and 3D morphometrics that you know we before outlined to try to predict how your nose will change and if you need a rhinoplasty or not. But again, it can be very important both functionally and aesthetic aesthetically um, and there's several things that we do again during jaw surgery to help set us up for future success with rhinoplasty try to mitigate any untoward changes to the nose and in the end of the day we want the most balanced nose face open airway uh, we can possibly get so thanks for listening. If you have any other questions, please check us out on our website, uh, www.dereksteinbacher.com. Thanks again.